do you think the metaverse is here within the next couple of years? And it might be that um, and this might be kind of a broad question, but what does the metaverse look like to you, you know, in the long term? And do you think that the market opportunity is right here right now? Or are we having our dot com bubble kind of wave of speculation around what the metaverse really is going to be? OK, metaverse is going to is, is all the metaverse is, is it really was born uh, with the birth of the PC. Right. That would be 1980, 1981. I was part of that. Uh, I know exactly what it's like. You, you form bonds that are just as deep as in-person bonds. You might not know. You, you usually wouldn't know what the person looked like. You just know what they sound like. And you're texting back and forth to them. And maybe, you know, you're trading software. Maybe you're programming. Maybe you're running a bulletin board system. You're doing things. But this is a very elite group that existed in the sense that, um, I mean, most of us were teens. But there are very few of us. But we existed around the United States. And this was an early version of the metaverse. Now, of course, with, with, with broadband and with all the gaming platforms, the metaverse in its early, in, earliest incarnation has vastly expanded to where the average Generation Z -er right now is very much part of that, where they have their headset on and their, their screen is divided up into nine different people and they're chatting and they're gaming, you know, multiple screens. Um, and, and that's their world, which is my world back when I was a teen to, to quite an extent. So I can relate to, to, to why that has swept uh, so many people. And uh, going forward, yeah, I mean, it's going to continue to grow. I think more and more people are going to, of all ages, not just teens, but all of, age, of all ages, um, are going to become a part of this because it's not just for games. It's also for uh, economies like Axie Infinity has, has proven. Many, I don't know, so many people in the Philippines have quit their day jobs to become professional Axie Infinity players because they can make more playing the game than at their normal jobs. And that, that's going to be, that's true for any third world country or any developing country. Uh, but it's also true for first world nations. I mean, if you can supplement your income, if you can generate a second income stream or third income stream from home by playing games, of course you're going to do that because you're going to have fun. Yeah. It's, it, you know, and some of these, obviously uh, Axie Infinity is the first to do this. Uh, P to E concept, and there's going to there's so many new competitors that are that are launching as well that are going to probably have as good if not better product, and it's going they're going to in turn attract a lot of eyeballs. So I think the valuation of the gaming NFT space where it sits right now, if you go say one whole cycle ahead, let's let's say we get through this tightening phase and we go back to one of those windows of opportunity. That window of opportunity, I'm going to be focused on the gaming space. I'm going to be overweighted in games.